After visiting with a body specialist in Minnesota, Cooper Cup has been ruled out of week one and there's a real possibility that he may end up on the injured reserve. We'll review what we know about this injury and if something like a PRP injection might help Cup later in this video. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and my goal in this channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. So if anatomy and that sort of thing interests you, then please consider subscribing. We gotta quickly touch on this whole body specialist thing. I'll be honest, I also lived and trained in Minnesota for a while. I have never heard anybody really referred to as a body specialist, and so I have no idea what that could mean in terms of who Cooper Cup was seeing. I mean, literally that could be anybody from a medical doctor, a non-surgical or a surgical sports medicine physician, to a chiropractor, to a physical therapist, to just somebody with no formal medical training whatsoever. So who knows what in the world that means in general. I don't really think it's a good idea when we hear that somebody is just seeing some nondescript body specialist term like this. It implies more of like a guru type of person who might be doing a little bit more kind of fringy atypical types of things. But nonetheless, it could have also been somebody extremely well qualified. So it would have been good to have a little bit more information. But he's been dealing with this recurrent hamstring injury. And if we look at our anatomy tool here, there's three primary muscle groups within the hamstring. We're looking here at the right posterior thigh, so right leg, the hip. The hamstring muscles originate off of a bone on the hip called the ischial tuberosity right here. There's two main tendon groups that come off. There's the semimembranosus and the conjoint tendon. The conjoint tendon is where we see the biceps femoris and the semitendinosus. They're really kind of one main tendon coming off of the ischium right here. And then the semimembranosus comes off the more lateral side. When we talk about hamstring muscle strains, of course, that's occurring somewhere in the muscle. There's a tear somewhere in this muscle and the most common location where we see a tear is here in the biceps femoris. One of the reasons why we think this might be a more common area is there's actually two heads, two components of the biceps femoris. There's a long head and then there's a short head. And these two muscles, despite functioning like one unit, actually have different innervation. So some theory is that maybe the different innervation plays a role in why this is a common area for a strain, but nonetheless, most often when we hear about a hamstring muscle strain, it's here in this biceps femoris muscle. Now with like all muscles and tendons, if the injury is higher up near the tendon or near the junction between the muscle and the tendon, that's gonna be higher risk, something that requires a longer absence and maybe a surgery. And just like you can have mild tendinous or tendon injuries up at the buttock and the pelvis, you can also have them down lower. And there's even a central tendon that runs through these muscles that can have some involvement. So we don't know which of these muscles was involved, but most common things is gonna be this biceps femoris. Also the fact that cup was initially considered day to day implies that this wasn't a severe injury like up at the tendon or something that they were even discussing surgery. That's not a thing that you would need to go see a body specialist halfway across the country. That would be an injury that should be pretty clear in terms of how we manage it, that they would be able to rely on their local sports medicine doctor. So my concern is more that there's just recurrent strains within the muscle, something that's a little bit generally lower risk, but might have some more variability with the opinions. The one thing that would not be surprising in terms of CUP's potential treatment would be a PRP injection. PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. Essentially, we do a blood draw from a patient's arm, concentrate the platelets in the blood and inject those platelets into the area of the injury. Platelets are the cells found within our blood that contain all these little granules that are filled with growth factors and cytokines, these signaling molecules. And when we inject those platelets, they release all those different growth factors and modulate the healing process within our body. And there's some good data to support their use for hamstring strains. This is a paper from 2022 that looked at specifically grade two hamstring strains primarily again involving the biceps femoris. And what they did in this study was they initially went in and they aspirated or they drained out the blood, the hematoma that occurs when you have a hamstring muscle tear. And then they injected PRP in one group and then did conservative standard treatment in the other. In this study, they had a total of 55 athletes and they were really a mix, college, professional, high school, across a bunch of different sports. So this is not specific to just football. But what they found was there was actually a decreased recurrence rate in the group that had aspiration plus the PRP injection. So here's kind of the crux of the data that we'll zoom in on down here. And you can see that in the group that had the aspiration of the PRP, they not only had a shorter return to play time of just over three weeks compared to the conservative, closer to four weeks, but they also had a much lower recurrence rate in the year and a half following. Only one compared to eight in the group that was treated conservatively without the PRP and the aspiration. So this study was very positive in favor of using PRP along with an aspiration of the hematoma to help 
treat hamstring strains. Another study that was done specifically in football players only, their results were a little bit different in that when they looked at straight up days missed, there was no significant difference, just a matter of three days between those who got the PRP and those who did not. But when you looked at the number of games missed, it was closer to just one game with the PRP versus closer to three games without the PRP. So still another study showing, if anything, a little bit of benefit in using PRP for these hamstring injuries. This would also fit with the timeline of potentially going on IR, which would require him to miss at least four games, I believe. And so when we do these PRP injections, they're not necessarily immediate. They take some time for the PRP to have its effect for your body to continue to allow some healing. And it would make sense that that might be around this three to four week mark two to three weeks to allow the healing, another week or two for gradual return and ramp up in activity before then hopefully getting back on the field. So it would not surprise me at all if part of the discussion with whomever Cup saw in Minnesota was considering something like a PRP. And then if they decide to do the PRP, that's not something he's gonna then turn around and play in four or five days and probably not even turn around and play in a week or two. So hopefully this is something that they can treat within this potentially one month period. It sounds like they're still deciding if he needs to be on the IR for the full time, but I'm guessing they may be doing a procedure like this PRP injection. It's something I do in my practice, not too uncommon at all. Definitely has some good benefit and data to support it. Until next time, we'll see you later.